We'll start with Mookie. Pearl Bohari. What's up, man? Good. Hey. Living. Hold up. Can you see me? Yeah. Oh, you're muted now. Okay. I'm good. Hold up, wait a minute. They thought you was finished. They put you back in that three tech and all you did was get it, man. Like uh, what's been going on with you these past couple of games? You've been flying around, getting great penetration, making plays. You know, what's your mindset, man? How much fun you having out there? Uh, yeah, I man, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm really smelling the roses and um, thankful for the opportunity to get, you know, play every single snap that I get to. Um, and it's fun to be in the, the position that we're in through that last stretch. It was kind of like we had to win every one of these games in order to, to potentially win the East, which we did, um, and to get home field advantage. So with a lot of pressure on the line, it's always fun to try to rise to that pressure and makes the games a little bit more fun when they're, you know, really, really meaningful. Um, and now, you know, uh, we have a great opportunity in front of us this weekend, Saturday night, primetime football. It's going to be a very enjoyable experience. No doubt, man. And we all know, and Coach McDermott mimicked this all the time, and in the rules of football, we all know that this game is one up front. And New England has a huge offensive line. So, you know, you got Trent Brown out there jumping around thinking, you know, he, he's just a big guy to deal with. So what's the mindset on and, and the motivation on going up against a, a New England offensive front? Yeah, they're, they're a great outfit. Um, I love the challenge to go against them every week. I know that it's going to be a very physical football game, and those guys, um, they, they go very, very hard and, and pride themselves in being a great unit. So it is going to be a fun test for us, um, seeing them for the third time this year, let alone, you know, two times last year. So we, we, we know these guys very well. And, um, you know, it, uh, in between the whistles, you know, you're, you're, you're fighting one another for your life pretty much. And then after the whistle, you're kind of buddy-buddy with some of the guys. Uh, but it is uh, it's, it's good. And um, like I said, the atmosphere here Saturday night, actually, I don't even know what the atmosphere is going to be like. I don't think anybody on this team has ever played a home playoff game here in a full in a full crowd. So uh, I can only imagine what it's going to be like. I'm so grateful. Absolutely. And speaking of grateful, man, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. Coach McDermott, uh, you know, he had his 50 year anniversary of being the head coach here, man. I just wanted to know how much uh, has Coach McDermott meant to you in your career? Yeah, I mean, First and foremost, you know, taking the the chance to, to draft me here. I know that he was obviously involved in that. Um, and so bringing me here and, and letting me really grow into, uh, you know, more of a man, you know, 21 years old, I think, when I got drafted and, um, you know, 25 now and uh, had a lot of ups and downs. And so just the, the rock that he's been for this organization and sticking to who he is, regardless of um, what's been thrown our way, um, he's been a good a very good mentor for me, and um, I, I'm definitely appreciative of the four years that I got to have. With him. Absolutely, man. Hey, good luck on Man of the Year, and most importantly, good luck on Saturday night. Thank you, brother. Hey, Harrison. Um, this was a little bit ago, but Leslie Frazier had told us a story at one point about, I believe, the last Patriots game, how coaches were mentioning that you were being even like a larger role than usual of kind of helping guys on the field, like an extra coach with Eric Washington out. Um, not that you weren't doing that before, but are there other things that have helped you this season be more comfortable in taking on possibly more responsibilities there, just growing into a role like that? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's been a really natural thing that I've wanted to do is, is that leadership role. And um, even my rookie year, like because the playbook came so easy to me, I turned around and was trying to help other rookies or even guys who were maybe in year two or year three and just didn't pick it up as quickly as I did. Um, but unfortunately in the NFL, there's, um, there's kind of like two different types of power. There's, there's personal power and there's positional power. And so I've built up as much personal power as I can, which is, um, you know, being, being a good dude in the locker room, working my off, all those things that you have a personal relationship with someone um, that you can, you know, there's leadership size to that. There's also positional power. You're middle linebacker, you're starting quarterback. Those people are in positions to have that leadership role and things like that. And so I think this year you kind of have to have some notches under your belt in order to get that positional power and a little bit more respect and leadership. And so the personal stuff that I've always had and had those leadership traits of mine um, have been able to flourish a little bit better because I've been making more plays on the field. And there's just, you know, leadership kind of comes hand in hand um, 
there's not too many captains of football teams who aren't making plays out there as well. So um, I think that that's probably been the, the biggest uh, help to my leadership. When you're earlier in your career trying to balance that of, you know, I'm waiting for that positional power, like you mentioned, how, what is that like? Is it hard to kind of wait on that? Or is it just, did that come naturally too? Like, what is that like behind the scenes? Uh, well, it's been a lot. Um, you know, work while you wait type, I think is the, the saying that we use here in the building. Um, obviously patience isn't something that comes easy to a lot of, you know, young men in the NFL, but you, you have to pray for patience and, um, it, it definitely hard in my career, not just on like the leadership side of things, but wanting to get opportunities or to, to finally see the performance of the player you truly are. But I, I'm sure you guys heard the story about, I think it's a Chinese bamboo that's, you know, you, you have to plant it and for four years, you have to water it every day, nurse to it every day. Um, and for four full years, it doesn't even break the surface. And then in the fifth year, it grows 100 feet. So did it take the bamboo tree for, you know, one year to grow 100 feet or did it take five years to grow 100 feet? It took all five years. And so even though you can't see those results, um, you just have to, you know, keep pouring in. And, and um, yeah, I really like that example. I think that's been a great um, motivator for me in my career. I like that example, too. Do you remember where you first heard it? Um, I think. Will Greenberg, one of our uh, strength coaches, gave me a book, and I read it in that book, I believe, um, when I was going through my ACL. Thank you. Hey, Harrison. We've heard a lot of the guys mention when it's really cold, it, it hurts more when you get hit. It hurts more when you're getting up. Uh, as a defensive guy, especially in the trenches, does that add to the importance of – jumping out with the physicality early in the game to to maybe you know not in an illegal way but inflict more pain on the opponent uh, look i um right rephrase it again you am i looking to inflict more pain no 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 no, no 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 i i mean let, let me not i'm not setting you up here like micah and josh and, and other guys have yeah. said when it's cold it hurts more when you get hit, tackled, mm -hmm. and things like that. So it, does that amplify the intensity uh, to set the tone physically early in a game? Uh, because it, it may sure, affect sure, people differently. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we want to pride ourselves in being a physical defense. You know, we, we have up uh, – in our in our defensive meeting room you know don't loaf which one of those things is turning down a big hit so don't obviously let outside forces like like the weather control you turning down a big hit or, or not uh, big body tackling a guy or whatever but um you know i think it's so funny how we try to find a narrative in these weeks and stuff i mean look the weather's completely out of our control and who gives if it's cold let's just play football you know what i mean like it, what if it's four degrees if it's nine degrees if it's 20 degrees if it doesn't matter let's just let's just play the game you know that is the best answer i've got we've gotten all week so no yeah. i appreciate you <laughs> thanks harrison hey harrison it's uh, jay with the buffalo news hope you're doing well um you know, you guys are at the regular, the end of the regular season now. Um, for players like yourself, uh, whose contracts are up, you know, after this year, have you given that any consideration at all? Uh, we asked Jerry uh, this same question the other day, uh, Jerry Hughes, and he admitted, you know, that it, it is something that has at least crossed his mind. Uh, you're in that uh, same situation. Is that something uh, that you've thought about at all, or do you block that out because of, you know, what you got going on on Saturday? Yeah, man, it's it's definitely a, a big struggle, um, you know, being – this is the first time I've obviously in a contract year. Jerry's had a few more under his belt, so um, maybe this is nothing new to him. But I've heard from players in the past too, um, but it's extremely important. That's what, you know, people forget about in the NFL is you have to have extreme mental toughness to, to play this sport and to realize that what's best for this team right now is to put all my attention and focus on how I can be the best version of myself to beat the, the Patriots. Um, Yes, the, those thoughts and worries and, uh, you know, the uncertainty of the NFL is something that every player has to deal with. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, contracts don't really mean that much. Everyone's kind of on a contract year every year and even every week with trades and cuts and stuff through a season. Um, but, you know, definitely, I mean, sometimes it's hard to even sleep well at night um, with some of those uncertainties. If you can just, you know, hear about one thing or a certain thought crosses your mind, you can kind of go down a rabbit hole of the what ifs and the 
um, things like that. But that's why I mentioned a lot in some of these interviews to you guys is something that I really mean is that this year I've been smelling the roses as much as I can because I wasn't um, – my last year in college, I don't think I did, and I regret that, that I didn't realize, hey, this is the last time I'm playing in front of my home – uh, crowd at Stanford or this is the last away trip with the boys or whatever it was at those time I didn't know it was that and um, obviously that's not uh, obviously I hope I get to be here um, in the future but I want to make sure that I am in the moment and realizing that we're playing in a full capacity stadium in the playoffs like I don't want to let the moment be too big and forget about all the great things that are going on and um, you know I might be one of the last guys to leave the field um you know, Saturday night, just so I can take it all in and really smell the roses and all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you sort of answered it there, and I, I think you know, I kind of would would guess what the answer would be. But I mean, you you hope to be back. Is that you know, is that something that kind of goes without saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, excellent. All right, thanks, Harrison. Sorry about that. Uh, Harrison, you got me? Yep. Um, how's it going? Um, you know, as a defense, I mean, you guys have you guys have accomplished so much already. In a big game like this, I'm, I'm curious for you, who now, you know, obviously uh, a few years in the NFL, you've played big games at Stanford. Do you do anything different in big games when everything is on the line like this, win or go home? Do you approach it any different, or is it kind of the same thing? Um. No, I think a lot of that is more outside stuff, more more kind of pressure built outside of the, the building. We really do a great job here, and, and we really did it in, in Stanford as well my four years there, was that every game is that big. I mean, it's not just a saying, like, for the player, um, you can go pull up a random clip from a random game and watch a random player. He's going 100% on that play. It's not like his 100% this week is going to be better than his 100% that week. Uh, but I think just the whole atmosphere, you maybe get a little bit more momentum, which is a big uh, indicator in the NFL that helps sway games. But in terms of the preparation and stuff like that, um, obviously we were playoff caliber. Now we're championship caliber. I know some other men uh, have, have gave you guys quotes on kind of what that means to us internally. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we're trying to – if it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And, uh, you know, I have my routine, and I'm, I'm sticking to that. Uh, I talked a little bit about this with Jordan uh, a couple of days ago. And I think I remember, you know, you, you and Shaq being pretty close uh, back when he was here, Shaq Lawson, what would a, t a team be getting uh, if, if they sign him, obviously things didn't go the way probably he wanted to in New York, but a guy that I know from everybody I've talked to really loved in the locker room. Yeah. Um, I like Shaq a lot. I have a ton of respect for him and um, you know, his, his story and his upbringing and his background, um, you would not believe what he's been through and then the person that he is today. Uh, I've never seen Shaq have a bad day. Uh, it, you know, I think I was with him for two and a half years or whatever it was, and he's got a giant smile on his face every day. He's bringing energy every day to the to, to whatever room or thing that he's a part of. And, um, you know, that was something really fun for me to see as a young player who's going through hard training camp or I was going through an injury. And uh, Shaq had that same consistency of a big smile on his face, laughing and joking at, at all times. And so, um, you know, that's definitely uh, um, a bright light when whatever team that he'll be on, he, he brings some good charisma. Thanks, Harrison. Appreciate it. Hey, Harrison. Um, Leslie Frazier is getting interviews, or it sounds like there's been reports of a few for him. And we've obviously seen what he's done with this defense, the numbers y'all are putting up. And I'm just curious more behind the scenes, like what are things that you really enjoy about him as a coach that make him effective outside of just like what the defense is doing on the field? Um, I think consistency is a word that, you know, for my four years here, he's been very consistent in the, the his approach every day to our defense and what his standards are. He's unwavering. doesn't matter. Um, you know, even if we win a football game, but if certain areas we were lacking, he's going to let us know that. But he also has a really funny sense of humor. I don't know if you guys picked up on that ever doing any media stuff with him. Uh, but as a player, uh, and it took the first couple of years, I, he would like say something and I thought it was a, it was serious. And I'd be all like insecure and worried about stuff. And now as I'm getting older and being around him more, I realize he's got a really funny sense of humor and knows how to pick and prod it, guys. And, um, yeah, I, I, I definitely um, believe that I, I see some of this stuff you guys put out about um, 
you know, different people in our building, getting interview opportunities, if it's front office or coaching jobs and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I congratulate every single one of those people. Um, I think that they, they all deserve the, the absolute best that's coming to them. So I wish them all luck. Candidly, I don't think I've seen as much of that side of Leslie with the humor, maybe just from, you know, being here less and over Zoom. Is it like really dry humor? Can you tell me a bit more about that? Um, I think he just, I don't even know how to describe it, but like if he, I don't, it's too hard to describe, but maybe, maybe it's even better that it's just kind of an internal thing, but yeah, coach Frazier, he does have a really good sense of humor. And again, you have to, it, it's like uh, I guess if I had to describe it, I would say it's sly. It's a really sly, like a, just a, a little poke, a little prod here. And once it resonates with you, you're like, wait, did he just, did he just diss me or did he, did he just joke about this? So it, it kind of takes you a little bit. There's layers to his, uh, his humor. It sounds like there's a good balance though of where you're not overly insulted and like, oh my gosh, coach thinks I'm terrible. No, no, so no. How does he no, do no. that? He's, he's definitely more of a, a coach through positivity guy. If, if there's actually a, a glaring thing or if you're underperforming, um, he uses a growth mindset and, uh, you know, here's the areas you can improve. This is what our standard is. How can we get you there? Um, he's very, very great in that aspect. This is more of when it's relaxed, not serious time. Does that help though, to have multiple sides of that coach of like, Hey, he's going to give me everything I need. Um, from like a feedback standpoint, he's going to be positive about it, but at the same time, we're going to have fun. Like how much can that help during the grind of a season? Yeah, definitely. It's very important to do. And kind of when I was talking about that power earlier, right. Coach Frazier's defensive coordinator. So he has a ton of positional power, but if he doesn't build up that personal relationships with guys here and there and having that, you know, funny, funny joke here or those, you know, Hey, more on a personal level, how are you doing? How are things with your family? Um, that's what makes a great leader is when they have that personal aspect as well. Perfect. Thank you. Hey Harrison, um, on a similar kind of note, I was kind of curious, Eric Washington, how would you kind of describe him as a coach? What has it been like having him, you know, lead this defensive line group? Yeah, I think coach Washington is someone who's, um, very passionate about what he does. I mean, he takes his job extremely serious and, um, you know, he's going to almost, almost like a perfectionist and he wants to know everything there is to know. Uh, I believe he's probably the first car here every day and one of the last cars to leave every day. Um, I know he likes his early mornings. I do know that because I've been asked to come to a few early morning meetings. Um, but yeah, he is, um, he really loves what he does and he sees the game from a coordinator perspective because he's been a defensive coordinator in the NFL. And so, you know, if you break it down to defensive line, you can be like, Hey, you just are in this gap, beat this guy, but he'll give you the full concept behind us to let us know, okay, this is the coverage. The quarterback might have to do this. Here's the extra fit. The safety's rotated this way. So the run can go that all these things that he can add to us um, because he, he knows the defenses very well. Um, and then again, when it comes down to his coaching, um, because of that kind of perfectionist in him, he wants, you know, footwork to be perfect every single time. So we're going to watch every single rep of everything that we did at practice, at a walkthrough, individual sessions, team periods. Um, there's, there's not enough hours in the day to watch all the film. Um, and so um, he's a good coach for that. Are you an early morning guy? Do you like coming? I, I'm more of a, a second mouse gets the cheese type of guy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think the West Coast did that to me when I was out there. Stanford classes didn't start till like nine. Um, and so I, I, I like to sleep in in the morning. I'm more of a night owl, I would say. But, um, you know, work is work. So, I mean, I'll do anything for football. I went to Cal, so I can understand that those right. vibes. Absolutely. But... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, by the way. I won't Sorry, respond to that, but that's fine. Um, one last thing for you. I was just curious, how would you kind of describe this defensive line group? There's a lot of personalities, a lot of experience. Like when you guys are all in a room together, just what is it like? <laughs> um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I love, I love the guys on our D-line room. Every year we've had a really close group. Um, you know, last year was difficult because of the COVID stuff. This year we've had some of that thing as well, but – um, we have a really good group of like, we got old guys, we got young guys, we got guys um, going into the middle parts of their careers, uh, guys on contract years, guys who've 
played for 12 years. The guys have had 12 games. And so um, it's a fun kind of community that we have together. And uh, the camaraderie is getting closer and closer. So that's why at the end of the season, I think it's going to be even more sad because, you know, realistically, not all 12 of us are going to be in the room next year. Uh, and so, you know, the further we get into the season, the closer we're getting and the harder that's going to be, the harder pill to swallow that we're not all going to get to be together again. Um, but I, I don't, there's no beef or, you know, I was told when I was a, in college that, oh, um, you know, guys in your position room, they're fighting for your spot. So they're not going to be your friend. That's not the case here. Like um, guys want you to succeed. The first person that's going to run up, run up to me after I make a big play on the sidelines is star, but we play the same position. So I was told that he's supposed to be not having my best interest in mind. And that's not the case at all. He's my biggest cheerleader when I'm out there. And so, um, it's a really unique room, and I'm very thankful that I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much.